Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Taekwondo Life Magazine Live. My name is Master Mark Sorianis. I am coming to you with another special episode. We're doing a series daily from the 2024 Paris Olympics. I shouldn't say from because we're not there, but we are doing it regarding the Paris 2024 Olympics. Of course, the Summer Games is a place where Taekwondo is featured, but we cover much more than that, IOC, WC. So today, what we're going to be talking about, and again, I am Master Mark Sirianis. This is the Believe Network, something that has been all over the news. We're probably a little late in reporting it, even though it happened today, it is the Olympic boxing gender controversy. And I'm sure you've heard about this because every watering hole, uh, every water cooler in the United States has been talking about this everywhere that I have gone today. So what are we talking about? Well, and again, I may mess up the name. I apologize. Emane uh, Khalif. Uh, the Algerian boxer in the middle of an Olympic gender storm forced a tearful first opponent to quit the fight 40 second, 46 seconds into her Olympic fight at the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. Now, for a word from our sponsor, Bet Online is the most trusted betting platform, your number one source for all everything online sports betting. Right now, you can receive a 50% free bet of up to $250 on your first deposit to bet on anything from the Olympics to baseball to Formula One racing. Bet online is every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. When the game's over, head over to our online casino and you can get in on the games of blackjack or poker, or unwind with 150 slot games. Head over to the website today and get in on the action. Use the promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% free bet credit on your first deposit of up to 250 Bet online, the gaming starts here. Okay, so what are we talking about here? A little confusing, right? Uh, this is not the first Olympics believe it or not, for these folks that are involved in this controversy. But Khalif was eliminated in the 2020 Olympics. And there's other issues here. But Khalif's Al Algerian. Uh, she failed gender eligibility tests for the Boxing World Championships. Yet she was allowed to compete in the Olympics here. And she forced her Italian opponent, Angela Carini, to withdraw from the opening bout 42nd six seconds in. I don't know why I can't say that. After years of competition in amateur tournaments around the world, Khalif and the other uh, transgender athlete, Lin Young Ting of Taiwan, suddenly have received massive scrutiny in their presence in Paris. Lin won the IBA World Championships in 18 and 22, but the governing body stripped her of the bronze medal last year because it claimed she failed to meet unspecified eligibility requirements in a biochemical test. Now, this is part of the issue, and we'll talk about this a little bit, is that the IBA was the governing body, like the WT for Taekwondo, um, but because of scandal and controversy, the IOC stepped in, and this is where part of the change comes. After the loss, Karini refused to a handshake from Khalif and then ripped her hand away from the referee as Khalif's hand was raised at the winner. If you watch it, it's really something to see. If you see the video, it wasn't an attempt to necessarily be rude or disrespectful. She's in a lot of pain, this girl, and, and really, really broken up. I'm used to suffering, Karini said after the fight when she spoke to reporters 20 minutes for 20 minutes through tears. I've never taken a punch like that. It's impossible to continue. I'm nobody to say it, but it's illegal. Now, this word from our sponsor. Okay, we're back. Carini's coach, Emmanuel Razzini, told reporters that he was unsure if the boxer's nose was broken and that he had been warned not to take the fight. Many people in Italy tried to call and to tell her, please don't go. That is a man. It's dangerous for you. We know the result. Before the Olympics, the IOC defended the decision to let Khalif and, and Lin Yun Ting fight in the competition even though they were both disqualified from the world championships for failing hormone tests that, that are the kind, and we'll talk about that. But the IOC sort of has doubled down on this. All athletes participating in boxing 
in the Olympic Games 2024 comply with the competitor's eligibility and entry regulations, as well as the applicable medical regulations, the IOC said in a statement prior to the Games. To me, they're just lawyering it, right? They're, they're basically saying, oh, they meet the requirements, so they're okay, but doesn't tell you that the requirements are fair and just. Both of these athletes have competed in the Tokyo Olympics uh, and failed to medal. I'm here for the gold, Khalif said, and that's what she told BBC Sport. I'll fight anybody. The uh, different status of Lin and Khalif at the Olympics and the Worlds is a fallout from the year-long dispute, as we talked about, from the Russian-led IBA and the IOC, which led to um, alleged failures of governance and integrity, plus relying on uh, issues regarding to Russia, right? Everyone competing in the women's category is complying with the competition eligibility rules, The IOC spokesman Mark Adams said they are women on their passports and it's stated that that is the case, that they are female. I find that to be a little bit of a foolish argument, right? It says they're 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 females on their passport. Well, that doesn't really answer the questions that we have here. The IOC also said now this I do understand a little bit that it made its decision based upon the 2016 Rio de Janeiro Olympic qualifying rules. And several sports since then have updated their gender rules over the past three years, including athletic, uh, aquatics, world athletics, cycling. The track body has also uh, last year tightened the rules on the differences in sexual development. So what they're saying here to some degree is that because this is sort of an ever evolving field, They went under the 2016 rules, which really didn't properly deal with this because in 2016, essentially, even though it was only eight years ago, it was a different world. The IOC has appointed officials to to run boxing at two straight summer games and acknowledged Monday the tournament rules for Paris are descended from those that were in place in 2016. That's what we were explaining. Boxing officials picked to run Paris's qualifying and finals tournaments, tried to restrict amendments to minimize the impact on athletes preparing and guaranteeing consistency between Olympic games it is a little bit disingenuous. There, what they're saying there is, oh, well, if there was a mistake in the past, let's keep the continuity going. I'm not sure that's right. It should be remediated, but okay. The IBA, the former and banned governing boxing body issued a statement Wednesday in which it claimed both boxers did not have a testosterone examination last year and were subject to separate and recognized tests for their disqualification. The IBA said that the tests specific specifics remain confidential, refusing to explain it. The IBA disregarded the IOC's recommendation and allowed Russian fighters to compete at the 2023 World Championships under the Russian flag. The governing body then disqualified Khalif only after Khalif defeated Russian boxer Azalea Amenova during their tournament. Kind of crazy, right? That's that's all Russian politics and Russian sport politics. But what we have here is, and we don't know where it's going to go. Obviously, for this Olympics, I think this athlete is going to uh, go through. Um, I saw some people saying that the female boxers shouldn't box. They should all protest. That'll teach the IOC a lesson. But anyone who knows Olympic athletes understands they work their whole life to get there. Um, to send that message and, and, and sit out is not what they train for, right? So what are your thoughts? I mean, in Taekwondo, I've experienced both the liberal and restrictive approaches to this issue for the collegiate work that I do. They basically allow people to self-identify. I haven't really seen it be a particular issue. But then again, the weight classes in those divisions are much, much broader. So um, I don't know if that really makes a difference. But for the WT, I think there are fairly restrictive rules. There are certain time constraints. Um, There are just testosterone levels. You can't simply say, hey, I'm going to change my passport. It's much more than that. I haven't seen it as a real issue in Taekwondo, but... Remember, while this is an issue of fairness, you know, in the other areas, if you're talking about running, if you're talking about swimming, swimming has been a high profile one where transgender issues have come up. Um, But those are issues of fairness. But in combat sports, it's more than that. It's an issue of safety, right? Um, That example of 46 seconds ending a fight shows you, you know, bone density, things of that nature, that um, perhaps there are fairness issues here that need to be addressed. I'm not sure I know what the answer is, but it's crazy that we've gotten to this point and this hasn't been addressed previously. From what I saw today on on social media, 
uh, in the same day as this event, there's just universal outrage um, over this. Uh, it, it really is quite, quite significant. We, 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 we faced a series of um, outrage in this Olympics, one over the opening ceremony, which was probably greater than this, one over the Dutch athlete, which you can check out our episode, the Dutch volleyball player who uh, is a convicted rapist of a 12-year-old girl. That had significant outrage. But this one seems to be even greater amount of out outrage across the sporting community. Uh, and I think people can relate to getting there after your entire life of trying to um, accomplish getting to the Olympic Games. The young Italian fighter is Carini. Uh, she said she's ready to walk away from the sport that she's trained her whole life for over fairness and safety issues. And if I were to think about the Olympic ideals and what the Olympic Games stand for, I certainly think that putting a young lady in the position that she has to choose to walk away from her sport rather than get severely physically abused by a, someone who is a uh, changed their gender seems unfair to me. I will also say in a qualified way, I think it's unfair to attack the athlete, this Khalif or this uh, Taiwanese athlete, because they're athletes, they're fighting. They don't go into the ring and say, I'm not going to fight because I'm transgender or I used to be a male. So the fact that they're allowed to fight is not their fault. And I don't blame them for going in there and fighting their best of their ability. So let's be clear about that. They're not the problem. The problem is, again, I'm not passing any judgment on their decisions in their life. What we're talking about is fairness and safety in the sport. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to know what you think. This episode has been brought to you by Bet Online. My name is Master Mark Serianis. I look forward to seeing you on the mat.